men we don't grow up we just grow old that is and this is a perfect opportunity for me to explain something when it comes to dating a fat person and dating in general men don't grow up they have this sick twisted ideology that they have to have an image over having a happy relationship so if you're not skinny with the big boobs and a big booty i think there's some truth to this but there's there's also a lot of inaccuracies. Dudes, men usually take a little bit longer to develop mentally speaking because they're offered a lot more leeway usually than women because women need to have their shit together almost instantly if they want to do anything in life. So there is some type of truth to this is, I mean, sure, but I'd be interested in seeing what that black guy is going to say about that in general because men do grow up dude okay like the person that i am now is not the person that i was when i was 20 most definitely um i don't know if this has to do with dating bigger women but i mean this girl in particular has a lot of skewed opinions on that also i want to apologize to anybody that hears people in the background as dudes right now on the porch working on the porch uh i don't know like every 10 years or so that porch needs to be redone or something like that there was some holes in the wood so they're out there now uh i guess fixing it i have no idea what they're doing but if you hear like drilling or you hear guys screaming, that's the reason. I'm sorry about that, by the way. But um, yeah, men usually take a little bit longer to develop and um, women are usually, I would say, about two or three years older on average, mentally speaking, compared to men, which is usually where women tend to date men usually. Like if a woman's 22, maybe she's dating a guy that's 25, 26 years old. And that's usually okay because like I said, guys take a little bit longer to develop mentally speaking. And that's all right. Um, I know a lot of women personally, I remember one time when I was talking to a girl, I think I was like, I think I was 22 at the time and uh, the girl I was talking to, I think she was n maybe 19 or 20 and I hit her up and, uh, I, she was like, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I'm 22. She was like, mm -mm, not, not old enough. You're not old enough for me. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm not old enough for you. I'm like two years older than you. That's like a minimum. I'm, I'm, I'm actually older than you. And then she was like, oh no, I just like, I just, I need to date a dad. I need to date daddy. Daddies are hot. Daddies are in style. I need to, I just love dads. And obviously I'm not a dad and I'm not like 42. So I was like at a disadvantage, but eventually, um, that relationship did work out, but not in like the way I wanted it, which was like an actual relationship, but I did have sex with her, which I guess is a dub depending on how you're looking at it, but she was kind of not like the best person, but it's all right, whatever. Let's just continue. Grow up. They have this sick, twisted ideology that they have to have an image over having a happy relationship. Most women have that ideology. Most women are thinking about how they want to have a healthy relationship. Men, sure. Yeah. Men don't want to be in unhealthy relationship. Sure. But men will usually tolerate a lot of things. Um, when it comes to relationships, if the girl is crazy, like I've met a lot of dudes that are dating women that are like very, very, very attractive women, but like to argue a lot or like to start conflict problems and things like that, like really crazy women. And I've heard somebody say before, the reason why you don't see a lot of crazy men is because they're either in jail or they're dead because they did something crazy and that like put them in the position where women are a little bit more ambiguous on that particular front. But I think women probably care a little bit more about the idea of the relationship than men do. I mean, speaking from my personal experience, I don't really care what other people think about my relationship. I don't like it when people even compare relationship to relationships in general. Like, don't compare me to this guy's relationship or that person's relationship. Like, what we have is something unique. Like, sure, there are guidelines that you usually have to follow. But I hate it when people go, oh, this guy flew out his girlfriend or they went on a vacation there. This guy lets his girlfriend go to the club and this guy lets his – like, I don't care. Like, I don't fucking – why does that matter to me? Dude? That's like, completely relevant. Twisted ideology that they have to have an image over having a happy relationship. So if you're not skinny with the big boobs and a big booty, you're not going to get picked. That's, I mean, sure, dudes usually care a little bit about the physical appearance. I don't know about so much of the big booty and big butt area. Like, that's, I mean, to a certain degree, I'm sure some dudes care about that. But as long as you're, like, a flavorful person and you're not, like, an absolute horrible person to be around consistently... That's not going to be negatively affecting you to a very large degree. I mean, sure, maybe the girls that have big boobs or big butts are going to be maybe a little bit more favorable. But that's like a <laughs> – if a guy is picking a woman specifically for those particular features, then you probably don't even want to be with a guy like that in general. So, I mean, it might just be a benefit to not have that guy pick you. Men are too worried about what they can get rather than what they should have. She's projecting. That's crazy. What they should have. So, like – Men are worried about what they can get. I think anybody that's going into a relationship is worried about what this person can offer me, right? 
And I always look at it like, what can I give to this person? Like, what do I have that's valuable that I can give to that other person? Because it's all relative. What you have right now may not be what somebody else wants. And I see this consistently a lot where people think, hmm, I know what I want relationships. I know what I want. I know what I need. I need I need this and need that. And I always think like it's very easy for you to know what you want, but it's very hard to understand what other people want and contour based off of those things. It's like when you get a gift for somebody. When you buy something for somebody or you get a gift for somebody, you you buy them something that they want. You buy them something that they're going to need, something that they can utilize. You don't buy them some bullshit like a Captain American figurine that they obviously are never going to use. They don't even know who Captain America is. You buy them like a makeup palette or some shit like that. You understand? Like you buy them something that they're actually going to want as opposed to something that you think that they want. What do they actually want? And then contour based off that. It's like that in relationships. Like what is somebody that you're dating really want? Probably time, attention. Maybe you tell them they look pretty or something. I don't know. There's a lot of things that you could do to contour to specifically uh, uh, to, to allocate resources to them. So, I mean, I don't even, I don't have no idea what this woman's talking about. about. What I'm basically hearing from this woman is like, I know I'm busted. I know that I don't have big boobs or big butt, whatever she said. And I think that it's really fucked up that guys are choosing women that have these particular features, but I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Okay. Just off topic. That's not predominantly the reason why this woman's not getting selected. It's probably because they're uh, the way that she's thinking, the way that she's like formulate, formulating these thoughts and things such and so forth. That's the issue. Like, sure. The weight is a problem. Like I, I think I watched a video of this woman recently saying that she's close to 300 pounds, which is crazy, crazy as fuck. That's a big, pro that's a big problem, dude. It's not the fact that you don't have boobs or butt. It's because you're 300 pounds. You, you're, you're thinking about it as a sense of like you are the one that's supposed to be the, the one that's chosen for no other reason than you just think that you're supposed to be chosen, which is really, really cringe. That's some straight up fem cell shit to think. Like, I don't understand why I see so many of these women nowadays going, oh, I don't understand why so many of these other women are being chosen when I should be the one that's chosen. It's like really fucking pick me, dude. It's really pick me, dude. Work on yourself. How do you know these girls that are being quote unquote selected are not really, really like amazing specimens of human beings? Just because they have big boobs and big butts doesn't mean that they're not, they don't have other contributing features that are making them attractive in the ways that men are choosing to date them for. I don't know. Like it's not always, bro, I never in my life, and I've talked to a lot of guys. Have I met I met a dude that said, oh, yeah, dog, I need a woman that's like really, really full figured. I need big boobs, big butts, double D's, whatever. Like, I'm sure I've met a dude that like maybe said that he likes big boobs because he likes to breastfeed or something like that. Sure. Or a big butt so he can clap his face on it. Sure. That's yeah, that's great. But for the most part, most dudes are just looking for a, a, a favorable woman that's not like going to cause too much conflict in their life that is pretty enough like that's most of the time so i mean being 300 pounds though that's just most definitely going to negatively affect you and the way that you're thinking which is like you're all high and mighty and you're looking down upon women that have i guess more favorable features than you and i guess they're like you're looking at yourself as higher than them which is really really cringe you're not skinny with the big boobs and a big booty that is not what's hurting her you're not gonna get picked men are too worried about what they can get rather than what they should have they don't want to be happy that's, or they do. They want to be fake happy. Yeah, but she can give them the real happy. Isn't that cringe? This woman is cringe, dude. This woman is real cringe. How do you know that, like, the girlfriend or, like, the wife that the guy has isn't what's actually making them happy? Because they're skinny? That is a crazy-ass way to think about We're it. But also buying into the idea that being attractive is something that... Doesn't she kind of look like an inflated version of uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt a little bit? That is valuable. That being attractive is something that is valuable it okay it and is. it's it's not in regards to our, our worth as human beings we are worthy whether we are quote unquote attractive or not <laughs> there is a lot of value in being attractive i don't know what this woman is talking about 100 percent. everybody knows that pretty privilege exists people get the door held up for them people that get free stuff people that get the better treatment yeah, dude, 100%. Have you ever looked at a pretty girl's, like, <laughs> have you ever looked at a pretty girl's Snapchat notifications or Instagram notifications? Dude, they're getting, even if somebody isn't well known. I saw this one time, I remember looking through this girl's phone. I saw like 20 messages a day from guys that she never responded to. Hey, what's going on, gorgeous? Let me take you out. Wow, you're so pretty today. Wow, that picture you posted four weeks ago was so pretty. I saved it to my phone. Let me take you out. Let me get your nails done. You're so gorgeous. Good morning. Text all over the place. Um, that's a, that's, that's something that happens a lot, right? 
being pretty, being attractive is most definitely a valuable asset in today's economy like today's like how we operate in society it's always been a thing actually like it's always been a good thing to be more attractive than not attractive and even in everyday life like more attractive cars are the ones that people want the most like everybody wants Lamborghinis and everybody wants Bugais and other things such as so forth like you know why because a Toyota Prius is not as attractive as a Lamborghini so naturally these things that are more attractive are going to be the ones that are most sought after Okay, whatever, bro. I mean, you can think whatever the fuck you want. I don't know what she means by as human beings. Maybe she's looking at it in the spectrum of like, I know she's not thinking about it in this spectrum, but in the spectrum of like being a human being means that like you were supposed to be in caves somewhere fighting giraffes and killing, killing wildebeests in a fucking cave, chucking spears at them or some shit like that. And because of that, we're more like, I don't know, like we're supposed to be more like physical. So therefore we shouldn't really care about what we look like. I mean, I see that from that front, but I know she doesn't think like that because that would literally debunk her whole entire like fat acceptance ideology. Anyway. Our, our worth as human beings, we are worthy whether we are quote unquote attractive or not. We are worthy if we identify as the ugliest motherfucker on the planet. I don't even know what that means. Like you can identify as the most ugliest motherfucker. So could, could I just be like Angelina Jolie or <laughs> I don't know, dude. Matthew McConaughey in 2004 and go, I'm the ugliest, I'm literally the ugliest motherfucker on the planet. Uh, Matthew McConaughey was literally like a nine in 2004, right? He was literally like the most, he's still really good looking to this day. What are you talking about? I don't understand why people say I identify as an ugly motherfucker. Like, dude, if you're not ugly, you can't just sit there and go, I identify as this. That's okay. I, I identify as Luke Skywalker then. Am I Luke Skywalker? No, I'm not nearly as attractive as Mark Hamill. You are still worthy, you know? I am still worthy whether some random person on the street is like, oh, she's ugly. And I'm still worthy if someone is like, she's the most sexy thing that I've ever seen in my life. And she needs to define what she means by worthy. Like, what do you mean when you say, I am worthy? In what way? Like, worthy of existing? Worthy of somebody's attention? Worthy of dating? Worthy of what? Like, what are you worthy of exactly? You can't just say, I am worthy, regardless of how I look, but not specify what worthy means. Like, what is your definition of that? It has nothing to do with my value as a human being. And, and this- I think everything that we have is determined based off the value we have as being human beings, since that's literally the only thing that we have lay claim to. Like, okay, like, sure. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, I own a house. That would be meaningless if you weren't a human being, because if you were like, I don't know, a squirrel or a chickamauk or something like that, what the fuck can you do with that? literally nothing at all so uh no um i'm pretty sure everything that we have because we only put value on things because we are human beings things in general would not have value if we didn't put that value on those particular things to begin with like if human beings didn't exist a bugatti would be literally worthless if we weren't human beings the clothes that you're wearing or the house that you're living in would literally be fucking worthless because we put the value on that stuff and the same thing could be said with physical appearances like what is more attractive, depending on the person that you're talking to, is valued based off of the person, right? So, like, I can think that Scarlett Johansson is very, very unhumanly attractive, right? But, like, somebody else doesn't think that. But the majority of people would think that. You know why? Because we are the ones that determine those things. So, obviously, to a certain degree, we only have value because we put that value on things. That I've ever seen in my life. It has nothing to do with my value as a human being. And, and this desire to be seen as attractive is also playing into these ideas. We just don't need to work. We just don't need to worry about it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So playing into these ideas equal oppressive beliefs systems. What? What the fuck is this woman talking about, bro? What does this even mean? Ideas equal oppressive belief systems? Like in general? In general, ideas lead to oppressive belief systems? Okay, so like just have an absent mind, I guess. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? These ideas. We just don't need to work. We just don't need to worry about it. Like, you need to tell me why, though. Like, you can't just say like, oh, yeah, I'm still worthy. Like, I'm worthy of being this. I'm worthy of that. But you first of all, you haven't told us what worthy means. And then you're saying like, it doesn't matter. So so what doesn't matter? Why is it? Why are you worthy? What are you talking about? I, I literally have no idea what this woman's talking about. Who cares if you are an attractive? If you everybody the fuck dude, if you ever want to get into a relationship, dude, there are more than one way to be unattractive. You can be a hottie on the outside, but he be a disgusting, terrible person, not a hottie on the inside, right? 
because for one, I don't know if you got, have you ever talked to somebody that looked very, very attractive, but then when you talk to them, you're like, this person is gross. Like they have, the, they have no thought patterns. They can't have hold conversations. They absolutely, they, they just can't, they can't communicate or they say very disgusting things consistently. Those people are very unattractive, but they look very, very good. And I'm sure that somebody could date them, but there is definitely a lot of value in being attractive. Otherwise, why would you ever work on yourself? If you're sitting here and you're telling me, even if on the physical realm of attractiveness, which is very superficial and relative, it's very relative depending on the person that you're talking to, right? Because what's attractive to me might not be what's attractive to you. But that's is that a case to not do anything? Because if you're saying like, who cares? It doesn't matter if you're attractive or not attractive. You do realize if you say that, there is no reason anymore to work on yourself. There's no reason to have skincare. There's no reason to take care of your skin. There's no reason to wash your t fucking brush your teeth. There's no reason to brush your hair. There's no reason to wear any type of clothes that fit you or even clothes in general. Because none of it matters. Like, why does it fucking matter, dude? Like, I'm not trying to appease anybody. I don't need to be attractive. I don't need to work on myself because I'm fucking ugly regardless regardless or I might be really attractive but it doesn't matter because I put no value on that shit like it doesn't matter it's like the same shit when it comes to these like intuitive eating people that say like all food is equal and there's no value or moral value placed on food if you believe that then it shouldn't matter what the fuck you eat you should just like go outside and suck a rock for 45 minutes because there's some fucking cal calories on that rock like it's such a dumb way of living um no I disagree and I know this person also disagrees too given the fact that they do have the social cues necessary to cut their hair style in a particular way brush their teeth wear glasses like you obviously don't even believe what the fuck you're saying at all like who cares if you are unattractive if you've decided my fucking wife my girlfriend my husband my fucking what are you talking about like you so you shouldn't perform for the people that you're with if you're with somebody and, and then your girlfriend or boyfriend goes hey babe i really like the way when you wear these particular things i like the way your hair is styled i like the way that you wear these boots i like the way you like that stuff's really cool if you want to like emphasize those things you should be doing that for your partner it shouldn't be like oh i don't give a fuck like i it shouldn't matter if i'm on this or that it, it does matter it does matter and you live in a world where it does matter yeah i'm an attractive like what is attractiveness you know you know what attractive why are you playing these semantical games bro you know what attractiveness is dude it is relative depending on the person but there is a general idea of what is and what is not attractive based on the human form it's just so complicated and yeah because i see a lot of times people will say you're, it's complicated because you're making it complicated and a, a, as a consequence of that because when she says like what is attractiveness she's questioning like the very idea of the idea of attractiveness right and because she can do that, she's taken it to a realm of like un un the inability to define it. And then if you can undef if you can not define a word, then it doesn't exist basically. So that's what basically where she's drawing these 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 ideas from. Oh well, confidence is the sexiest thing people can wear. A woman can wear. Men too, hundred percent. If a guy's confident, I say this a lot. Like if a guy is like six foot four, sorry. If a guy's five foot six. <laughs> If a guy's five foot six, um, he may not act like he's five foot six. A guy that is short may not act short. Like even if you have a very low stature, if you are confident within yourself and you know what you bring to the table and you know how to operate in society and all this other stuff, that's that five foot six is only gonna take you like that's not gonna be that's not gonna be the main thing that prohibits you sure there are plenty of women out there that will literally just dismiss you because you're under six foot which is really really sad because most of the guys i know who are under six foot are like amazing guys and they would offer to a woman a lot of benefits and maybe men too but most of the guys i know are not gay but anyway um the the, the, the way that you present yourself is 100 percent valuable and i'm just like eh. mm. Yeah, confidence is sexy, but... We so you agree. <laughs> still pandering to other people. Yes. So who should we be pandering to? Because, like, you do realize we live in a society that is defined by human beings. Like, who are we supposed to appease? Are we supposed to be appeasing... Like squirrels? Are we supposed to be appeasing, like, gazelles? Like, what are we supposed to be appeasing, dude? If not people, then who? Because... If you want to get a date with somebody, aren't you dating another human being? Don't you want to appease them? Don't you want to see what they like and go based off of those things? Or like when you get a job, don't you want to like perform for that person? Because you do realize without that person in place, the job has no value, right? Uh, okay, I mean, I don't know what the fuck. This what is this woman talking about? The entire thought process she have, has right now is, is, is completely convoluted. It makes no sense. Yeah, confidence is sexy, but... We're still pandering to other people, you know, by saying confidence is sexy. Who the fuck cares if... 
What do you mean, who the fuck cares? Literally the person that you're with. What the fuck are you talking about? Have you never been in a relationship before in your entire fucking life? Have you ever never had a conversation with somebody? Have you never... If this was the case, like, oh, it shouldn't matter how you act or the way you perform or the way that you look based on because you, you shouldn't care what other people think. I understand what you're saying, but you have to at least understand, too, that we live in a society where you're going to be performing for other people. Everything in life is going to be based off those things because that's how our society works. You want a job, you perform for other people. You want a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you perform for that person. You want to do anything, it's going to be for another person or yourself. It doesn't matter. So, like, you're... Okay, whatever, bro. This woman's on some different shit, bro. ...to other people, you know, by saying confidence is sexy. Who the fuck cares if other people think that you're sexy? Yeah, well, like, my fucking wife just told me that I I smell like musk butter, and I've been wearing the same shirt for 15 days straight, but I guess it doesn't matter, even though my wife told me it's a problem. If you feel sexy, great. That's... That's fine. That's... <sighs> <laughs> you can feel sexy and it not be true. There are plenty of people out there that sit there and think they're nines and tens when in reality they're like fours. And you can believe that you're way higher than you actually are on the scale of attractiveness in the sense of like what you believe. But the reflection out in reality is often not the case. There are plenty of people out there that think they're nines and tens. And then when they try to get a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, they don't get them because you are not a nine or a ten. You might be more close to a five, which is okay. But if you think you're a nine or a ten, you're going to be shooting very, very high or you think you're way more valuable than you actually are. You should at least understand where you're at in the market value. Like you can find a lot of beauty within yourself, but that doesn't mean that the person that you're with or the person that you're trying to attract is going to find that same beauty in the same places. Like you've lived with yourself for 30 something years. Uh, the person that you're talking to doesn't know the fuck you are. If you don't feel sexy, that's fine. Like, like if you're asexual, cool, whatever, but make it about you and not how others are perceiving you like a lot of people yeah you're, you're never gonna find a relationship if you think like this like you should find sexiness within yourself <laughs> sure i mean it's a weird way of looking at it you should find beauty within yourself you should find attractiveness within yourself but you have to also understand that if you're trying to find somebody to be with that they are going to find you attractive and that maybe you should probably try to emphasize that a little bit you know like if there are traits on your body that you're working for, it might be okay to work on those things for the person that you're with, right? Like if you're dating somebody and your girlfriend goes, hey, I think you should shave because I think you're more attractive when you shave. It's okay to shave. Like if your girlfriend or your boyfriend thinks, hey, I like that shirt that you usually wear. Maybe we should get you more shirts like that. You look really good in stripes. It's okay. Just go get some stripes. Like it's not, it's okay to like find attractiveness in the other person that you're with. In the same way that for instance, if you're dating a guy and he's like, damn, I really like, damn, I really like your butt cheeks. It's really okay to go to the gym and work out your butt cheeks, man or woman. I don't care what anybody says. Having big butt cheeks as a man or a woman is super great nowadays. Like a lot of people want to become confident so that they can be sexy. They know that it can't change their size, but they're like, if I'm confident, then I will be sexy. And I'm, and that is, is too, is problematic. So how about just feeling confident just because it feels good or it's very easy for somebody it's like somebody that says like i don't believe in depression because i i think it's impossible for somebody to feel bad because i don't feel bad myself it's like one of those people man like you can't just force yourself to be confident you can't just force yourself to feel good you can't just force your you know even somebody like me right i have a ability personally speaking to just be perpetually kind of at a good level of happiness like all the time but i know there are people out there and i've even been had i've had times where i don't feel the best and maybe you go through a stint of depression hopefully it is just a stint hopefully it's not something that affects you for a long period of time and hopefully you can rebound but when i hear somebody say just be confident just be good in yourself just be this and this that's not as e it's very easy to say these things but like in practicality it's not as easy as it, as you can just say, oh, yeah, just be sexy. Just be, you know, it's problematic to want to be good looking. And it's also problematic to be confident because if you're confident, then that means you're confident for somebody else. And if you want to look good, looking good is also a reflection for someone else. Therefore, you're not doing it for yourself. Therefore, it's a problem. I don't know, man. This person's on some different shit. Who is problematic? So how about just feeling confident just because it feels good or, you know, you're able to relate to your body better, body better and maybe you'll feel sexy yourself but fuck that like doing shit for other people all the time so that they can consume you you're not an object 
you're not an object. You're a human being, 100%. But it's all right to feel objectified in a in a in a relationship or like when you're in a when you're in a particular arrangement. Like we all want to be used every once in a while. It feels good to know that you can satisfy somebody else in a way that is maybe a little bit um you know objectifying. I think that's okay. I think there are a lot of like for instance, I remember when Ariana Grande was like upset that somebody was saying like, oh, you know, Ariana Grande was sitting there going like, oh, I'm, I'm not an object. I'm this. I'm a woman. I'm this and that. And But then like you look through her catalog of songs and it's like, break up with your boyfriend. And it's like, you can hit it in the morning. You know, you can hit it. Like she's very adamant on the fact that she's not an it. Yet in her songs, she refers to herself as an it. And that's fine to do these things. Like I don't think that Ariana Grande is wrong for that. It's just really interesting how she doesn't she doesn't seem she doesn't seem to have the same type of mentality when she's talking to people outside the realm of music. But whatever. It's okay to be an it every once in a while. And it's really okay to be an it for somebody that you really care about. Because if you want to appease the person that you want, if you want to appease the person that you're with, sometimes you're going to have to do some things that necessarily are not the things that you want to do the best. Like it's not the things that you want to do all the time, but it's okay because you're making sacrifices to improve their happiness as, and as a consequence you're going to make yourself happy as well right like the example that i gave earlier which is like maybe the person that you're with really likes this particular type of clothing item that you wear so you emphasize it a little bit more and you do the things that they like the most and stuff like that like it's okay to do those things i don't think there's anything bad about that you're you and you're fabulous and it's okay to be fabulous for somebody else like it's i to be good looking for somebody else right okay fat women all her all her, everything that she said that woman, that woman has to have like zero, zero brain capacity. There's no way somebody could be thinking like the way that she does. And then like <laughs> say it as often as she does. Anyway, I'm going to also keep it a bug, dude. Laying down as a fat person in bed, taking like cameras like this. It's always, it's always looks, it always looks so terrible, man. But her hairline is really nice. So I'm going to teach you how to get the princess treatment from men. And I'm talking like you're over 300 pounds. Oh shit. And men are treating you like gold i'm interested in learning how to do this dude i am also interested in how to become a to get the princess treatment i want to be a passenger princess i want somebody to take care of me buy me mk purses nah i am worth more than an mk purse i am worth i am worth extreme measures buy me a whole not only do i want mks but i want birkins i want birkins i want you to take me out i want you to tell me that i'm pretty and i'm gonna also call you 50 times just to tell you that you're not worth it and you're ugly and you're disgusting but then you come back to me because i'm so amazing i have been flown out i have been wined and dined i've had very respectful conversations i get flowers regularly yeah, fingers are inflated dude I'm not gonna lie to you. This takes time. It takes patience, understanding. You want a quick fix? I don't know what she means by princess treatment. Is princess treatment getting flown out, getting wined and dined, getting... Is that what princess treatment was? I thought that princess treatment was like, you have somebody that you're in a relationship with, they respect you, and that you guys are compatible, you guys go out on dates sometimes, you guys have good communication... Like, the guy respects you and shit. Like, I thought that was what... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I guess it's just material. Is Am I... Have I always been wrong? I thought princess treatment was, like, having somebody that actually cares about you in a really realistic way. Not just somebody that, like, spends uh, exorbitant amounts of money on you. But I guess I'm wrong. I don't know. Somebody let me know down below. This is probably not the video for you. Number one, unsubscribe and don't engage with content that is battle of the sexes. Meaning, like, all men are shit. True. All women are shit. There are shitty people in this world, and that has nothing to do with their gender. True, dude. I hate it when people, usually when I see people that subscribe to one particular aspect of life, and then that's like their way they, they go about their entire life, it's, it's always a red flag for me. Because the way that I feel like people should be looking at their life, or life in general, is you should have a toolbox of a way of ways to ways to navigate the world right how many times have you met somebody that had just one way to describe everything like for instance oh bro my girlfriend broke up with me oh yeah well your fucking girlfriend broke up with you because she was hypergamous and that she wanted to she wanted a better man and you you just weren't that good of a guy at that particular moment in time she's probably getting her back blown out right now by a guy because you know women are fucking garbage and their shit and then in another scenario you could say like yeah bro um uh my girlfriend broke up with me because 
I cheated on her. Like I, I was in the problem. I was in the wrong. And then he would go, okay, but you got to understand this, bro. You're a man. You should be able to cheat on your woman. Like cheating on your woman would want her to, you just wait like two months. She's going to come back because you're a man, dude. You're supposed to have that. A lot of dudes, ha like not a lot of dudes, but a lot of people do have like that one thing that they hook onto. And that's just like how they just, they, they subscribe to their entire worldview. Realistically though, it should be like, you should be more nuanced. You should have the ability to see more than one realm of how things are able to be solved and done throughout your life. Because it's it's just, if if you only have one thing, it, 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 it's just like, if I know, right, for instance, if I know that, for instance, you voted for Trump, which I don't have a problem with. Let's say you voted for Trump. I also know probably you voted, if you voted for Trump, you probably don't believe in the vaccines. You probably think that the vaccines were like microchips or some shit like that. You probably think that Joe Biden, you know, you, you, you probably uh, have, you know, uh, the, the, the video of Hunter Biden doing crack with his dick out and shit like that saved in your phone, which is fine, by the way. It's like, whatever. I thought it was a crazy video. Like, it's a, you know, it's really funny, though. Is I was thinking about this recently, like the people that really believe in like conspiracy theories and stuff like that, that think that there's some kind of like people in the background that are like controlling all of us or like they're, they're, there's people trying to like, you know, orchestrate how, how we live our lives and stuff like that. And I just think like we have a video of the most powerful man in the world's son. I know what his dick looks like. I saw him doing crack. I saw this dude having sex with a prostitute and I'm just thinking Damn, dude, if there are people at the very top, 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 top doing this shit, dude, they must suck a lot of dick or um, they must be like really, really inconspicuous, really, really like ambiguous, dude, because like we saw we got pictures of the point I'm making is like you should have more than one way to look at the world. It's not good to just look at the world through one lens. Stop being tunnel vision. Open up your horizon. A lot of that content is made because it's very relatable. And it, it, it just confirms your biases, right? That's really what it comes down to. You, A lot of people that go to these red pill content creators or like people that make these particular types of videos, it, they're just, they, they have a thought pattern, right? They think about a particular thing and they're just going to these people to hear what they have to say, reconfirm what they say, right? So like you don't like women for some reason, whatever. Women suck dick and they're, they're terrible and they cook food and stuff and, you know, they make coffee and they also have menstrual cycles or whatever. And that's terrible. And then you know that. And then you watch them for them to say that and then have the new thing that you have to say. It's just people are just wired to hear the same shit over and over again so they can go, I knew it. I knew it. Yes, I, I am right. I am right. I am right. So that is um, that's the reason why a lot of these people watch that stuff. It takes a very big person to look at that stuff and actually look at another lens um, to 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 look through the world. Right. Like it takes a lot. It takes a really big. Per no pun intended. It takes a big person to be able to look at more than one way to look at the world and when someone goes viral for making something that's like oh guys do this they're gonna keep trying to make that content and it's not always genuine number two if you want to be treated like a princess you have to act like a princess it also helps to look like a princess and trust me i get it i grew up in a household where like so like what do you mean like a princess like act like pocahontas from the pocahontas movie or like what what kind of princess dude like cinderella what kind of princess are we talking about Diana. Sarcasm was literally our love language. It's like how we communicated, how we love each other. That's great, but that's just not something that I want in my relationship. Sarcasm? You don't want sarcasm in your relationship? It's weird. <laughs> what? Can you imagine just like meeting up with a girl and she's like, listen, um, before this goes any serious, like before this gets any serious, like I just gotta let you know, I am adamantly against sarcasm in relationship. It's a no-go. So if you're sarcastic in any way, shape, or form, that is it. That has got to be one of the weirdest things I've heard in a relationship. And I've heard women literally say they couldn't date me because I was born – because my, my, my shit was uh, a cancer or I was under six foot or the car I was driving was was made before 2020 or I watched anime. So, like, I've, I've seen these. That one right there, though, being sarcastic, that one's <laughs> that one's out of the ordinary. That is not a normal one. I really want to be treated, like, in a romantic way. Want... Yeah, but, like, all the time – like all the time you want to be treated like a romantic way that doesn't that get boring dude doesn't that you don't want to like have some fun every once in a while like i can't make fun of you i can't say things that are a little bit condescending that are a little bit off topic that are things that are not gonna make any sense at all that seems boring dude to just have a person that's never like that always want to be that always wants to be treated romantically no nah, that's boring dude want to be treated with respect and just a lot of love and understanding yeah but like all the time I can't joke around with you. I can't have fun with you, dude. Like, look, don't get me wrong. Love, understanding, yeah, I get it. 
but you know that people are more than just that. They have other things going on. Like, what if I'm upset one day? What if I want to just take a shower and not talk to you because I'm mad or I'm upset or I just want to play a video game for three hours or I want to beat off or I want to go to the supermarket and I want to buy eggplants. I don't know. Like, could I do any of that stuff? No, I can't because you want to be treated romantically and stuff. Whatever. So I give that. Like, when I talk to someone, I talk to men in a certain way. Oh, I see what she's saying, dude. Oh, it's the projection. It's the projection. Okay, look. If you're in a relationship, it shouldn't be, I know what I want, therefore I'm going to put that upon another person. <sighs> I don't know how these people got so far in relationship spaces thinking this particular type of way. It's not about how you want to be treated and thinking that other people want to be treated that same way. That's fucking dumb. That is stupid. You're your own person and the other person is their own person. If you want to be treated a particular type of way, how do you know that that person wants to be treated that same type of way? You're a different person compared to them. And I'm not saying you can't find somebody that wants to be treated that same way compared to you. That's fine if you want to. But most of the time, that's not going to happen because people are individuals in the way that you think is going to be different compared to how somebody else thinks. And that's all right. You know, that's literally fine because it's the most annoying thing to meet somebody that's exactly like you, which is never going to happen. But if it does happen, it's not very, it's not fun most of the time. It's way better to, one of the best parts about dating is to discover things about people. It's one of the most satisfying aspects of a relationship for me is discovering all the deep details of your life, discovering what makes you tick, discovering the things that, that you like and how you operate and, and, and those little things that annoy you and how you cook your food and your favorite color, all that gay shit. It's really, really entertaining for me it's it, it, people are infinitely interesting and i don't think it's a good idea to go into a relationship with this idea of what you want and try to think that that the other person wants that thing too no i don't think so i think that's not a good thing i think that you should be going into a relationship you should have an open eyes open your eyes okay stop clouding your visions with all the things that you want Open your eyes. It's all right to sometimes have a thing that you didn't, you didn't necessarily want, but then it turns out to be pretty good. It's all right. It feels good to know that this person likes this stuff and then you didn't like it, but now you do like it. You get a new different uh, idea of what, you know, like how you want to navigate things now. And that goes into like number three. I'm always so respectful when I speak to men. That's cool. I always speak to them in a really high regard. I'm always like, how are you, sir? Eh, I don't know about sir. I mean, maybe for the guys that she's going for. Very intentional and communicating my feelings. Sir is kind of weird, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, sir for me is like daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, poppy or something like that. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, dude. Just call me by my name. I'm okay with just, just call me by my name. I don't know. Things can either they reciprocate that or they get really freaked out. It's just a little bit weird. I think you, it's just probably better to refer to people by their names because if you refer to people by their names, you can't really fuck that up. But if you refer to them as sir... I don't know. It just kind of feels like, I don't know. I'm like your boss, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm like, uh, uh, like I'm at the top of like a corporate ladder and you're like my intern and you're trying to get a job. That's what it feels like. Or you're trying to like suck up to me to get a job. I just don't like it personally. I don't know. Usually when I'm in relationships, I don't want to feel like I'm better than you. <laughs> I just want to kind of feel like, you know, you we're, we're here together. I'm okay if they get freaked out because I realize I'm like, okay, I don't need to waste my time with this person. Well, I, I don't know. if they, Okay. Look, first of all, dude, it might see, this is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it's the projection instead of saying like this is i'm not gonna waste my time with this person just because that person freaks out because you called them sir they might just be looking like oh uh i don't really like to be called sir i don't think that's like i think it's probably not something i want to be called if you're just gonna dismiss that guy because of that particular reason that's weird as fuck that's a really you know how many times that i've been out with a girl and they had said something that i didn't necessarily like but I didn't leave them for that. Like there, you know what I'm talking about? There are plenty of times where I heard a girl say something weird and I was like, oh, oh that's kind of weird. Yeah, but like, all right, yeah. But I give them the benefit of the doubt and I keep pushing because like overall, that's very small in correlation to the rest of the shit that, that encompasses that person. So if they get freaked out because you called them sir, I don't think that's a, it's like, it could be like a red flag, right? And I always say this, like red flags are not necessarily like you break up with that person or leave them. They're just things to be aware of. So if somebody says, hey, I don't like to be called sir. I don't really like that. That's not that's not a reason to break up with them. That's just, I don't know, just be aware of it and maybe call them what they want to be called, right? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. What?
They don't get it. Like, they don't get it. <laughs> number four should have been number one. They don't get what? What are you talking? They don't get, the, the, they don't like to be called sir? What kind of guys do you want to date? What kind of fucking, what? Okay, I don't need to waste my time with this person. They don't get it. Like, that approaches me and immediately talks about my body, is sexual in any way, says things that just like rub me the wrong way. I don't even respond. I don't. I think this is a probably good idea no matter who you are no matter what circumstance you're in especially when it comes to online dating because a lot of dudes if they are being sexual to you right off the bat then yeah it's not a good indicator they probably just want to have sex with you which is not an anomaly especially if you're a woman you probably already know that but like most guys do organically just want to have sex with you because it's way better than just beating off perpetually i guess it just depends though sometimes it is easier to just beat off but a lot of dudes will do that but I think it just, it really depends on the situation that you're in. Like, if you are somebody that just wants to have sex, then it's probably not a bad idea. Or at least try to discern somebody whether or not they're a good person to have sex with. Because not all people are created equal. And you don't know if that person's, like, crazy. Or if they want to, like, steal your liver or whatever organ they, ha they had at that particular moment they wanted to harvest. So probably be a little bit... I would say on the side, err on the side of questioning, you know, always be a little bit suspect. But, um... Also, if you're in a relationship already, I don't think it's, like, a bad idea to have a guy or somebody in your relationship going, like, hey, oh, man, your butt cheeks smell so good. Good, You should just real quick just put them on my face or something. Or if a girl was like, man, I could really just swallow. I could swallow some BBC right now, right? I mean, it's okay if you're in a relationship, that is. But definitely a good idea. Um, it doesn't matter what circumstance you're in at the very beginning of a relationship or if you just start to talk to somebody. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to continue with a guy or anybody that mentions that they want to have sex with you or do things that are sexual to you. Unless that's what you want. Don't even open the message. Delete and move on because they're already telling you what they want. Stop engaging. Yeah, but it's like you should also be working under the assumption that no matter what circumstance you're in, that person is going to want to have sex with you. That should always be an underlying thought. And I think most people probably know that, that if you're on a dating app, that sex is going to be something that the other person is going to want, obviously. Now, the difference is what is their primary intention when they are talking to you? So, Obviously, they want sex, but are they willing to work for it? And is sex the primary reason to talk to you? Because if it's not, and they are willing to wait for you, then it's probably better. You know, it's probably a good idea to maybe trust that person as opposed to just somebody that's going to just go, hey, what does your vagina smell like? Can I smell your vagina real quick? Does it smell like grapes? Like, I bet, that, you know, that's not the best. But you should always be working on the assumption that the person that you're talking to probably wants to have sex with you. And by probably, I mean, like, there's a high probability. Please stop engaging with these kinds of men. Number five, I tell them exactly how I want to be treated. That's not a good thing. No, I'm going to let you know right now. Not a good thing. Always keep it ambiguous. I mean, you should have you should have a idea on how you want to be treated. I don't think it's ever a good idea to tell somebody how you want to be treated. How you should do it is show, don't tell. So if somebody does something wrong, then you enlighten that person. Hey, I didn't really like that. I don't know if, if it's not a good idea. To go into a relationship or talk to somebody and go, okay, these are the things that I do not want to happen. These are the things that are going to be a total no. A lot of people might think, David, this sounds like a good idea though. To tell somebody what they're what, what to expect right at the beginning. Most people are not going to respond to it like that. Most people are going to hear all the things that you have to say and go, this ain't worth it, dude. This person is already going through all, the, all these things. Like I'm already, you know, a lot of the stuff, like if you're going through a dating app, right? And somebody has restrictions, for instance, like things I will not tolerate. You know, guy cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh. Guy cannot do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. I'm looking at that like I don't even know you yet. And you're already telling me what I can and cannot do. I don't want to date you. Okay. Now, you obviously should have standards and rules for yourself. That's fine. But you should always be trying to, instead of vocalizing those things right off the bat, because that's going to dissuade a lot of people, what you should do instead is have those things in the back of your head, meet up with that person, and see if that person displays any of those things, and try to get it out of them in a more ambiguous way, rather than just going, hey, you don't, you you know, you're musty, I don't want to fucking date you if, you if you don't wear deodorant, you fucking busty ass, you know, like, that's just... It's a little bit on the nose. I tell them I like flowers. I yeah. like flowers regularly. Yeah, that's that's definitely not going to be a... That's, I don't know about you. 
I don't know about you, but if I was talking to a girl and we went on a date or whatever, and she was like, listen, <laughs> so I like flowers regularly. I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I don't know why you telling me that. <laughs> What do you, I don't even know you yet. What the fuck are you talking about? Can we like work towards it first? Like, this is not a good thing. I'm gonna keep it above. That'd be like me going in the date. Like, listen, I'm probably, you know, <laughs> let me tell you about what I like. Uh, V-Bucks. Uh, man, I love V-Bucks, man. When I play Fortnite, I love them skins. I love them, dude. They're the best. That new Doja Cat skin's coming out soon. And, you know, Billie Eilish. I'm just really kind of thinking that maybe um, I like V-Bucks regularly. You know anything about that, actually? You know what? Let me see your wallet real quick. Can I see your wallet? How much you got V bucks in there for me or whatever? Like, I mean, I'm not saying I need them, but you got that for me? Like, it's just like, what are you doing, dude? Why are you telling me things that you want right off the bat? I don't give a fuck. Who are you? <laughs> what? Flowers make me feel blah blah blah. I love gifts. I love when someone. Yeah, dude, me. get da, bro. You're giving off the wrong impression, bro. What kind of guys are you looking for? What kind of guys are you looking for, bro? You looking for dudes that are just gonna buy you shit? Just say that. Just say that, dude. And it's all right. It's, it's fine. If this is what you want, if this is what you want, is this what princess treatment is? Just getting guys to buy you stuff? Is that what that is? I thought princess treatment was like a guy that respects you and a guy that like is okay with communication and you know he he wants to take you out on dates sometimes and treat you right and things like that. I thought that's what that was. I didn't know it was a hey, fucking fly me out and buy me gifts and flowers and shit. <laughs> what? Oh. I didn't know that's what that was. I'm pretty sure that's not what that was. But maybe she has like a different definition of what princess treatment is. If you just want a dude to buy you stuff, that's just say that. Just fucking say that, dude. But I'm going to let you know right now. I'm going to keep it a solid buck with you. If you want a dude to just buy you gifts, that is not the same kind of guy that is going to be prepared to date you. Okay? These are two different brackets of men. I'm not saying that you can't date a man that isn't going to do these things. But if you are specifically dating to find a man that is going to buy you gifts, buy you flowers, fly you out, do all these extraordinary things, that guy is not looking at you as like a relationship girl. He's looking at you as like a sugar, like a sugar baby. Okay? In the same way that if these guys are looking for women just to have sex with, that woman is not relationship material for the most part, okay? Now, sure, you could meet a woman that is relationship material that will give you sex, but most of the time, it's just those two things don't usually conflict, okay? You understand, like, those two things are not gonna usually, they're not gonna be together. So, it's fine if you wanna have these things and you just wanna do to buy you stuff, but I'm gonna keep it a buck. That guy probably isn't gonna look at you as a relationship. He's probably gonna look at you as like a side piece or something like that. If that's what you want, that's fine, but I'm pretty sure you're talking about relationships. But, you know, go off. And blah, 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 blah. Like, I tell them exactly what I want. Like, he's Santa Claus or something like that. Like, yeah, I'm gonna probably need a couple MKs, a couple Birkins, a couple flights. And here's the thing. Some of them are gonna do it just in the beginning, just to, like, get your attention or whatever. But if you... <laughs> you're attracting the wrong dudes. If... I don't know how old this woman is, dude. I don't know if she has, like, any idea. Damn, this shot is really unfortunate for her, dude. I got to keep it a buck. But it, 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 I don't know if this woman has a lot of dating experiences, dude. But this sounds like you wanted to date a sugar daddy. And that's fine if that's what you want. Like, no shade. Go ahead. But I, it's not practical for actual dating. Like, it's just not. Usually, if you want to date somebody, you want to date somebody that's going to be malleable with you somebody that's going to be able to communicate somebody that's going to be able to you know somebody's going to be, to be able to talk to you about the stuff and be able to actually um what's the word i'm looking for compromise with you on things not a guy that's just going to buy you shit in my opinion having some guy that's going to buy you shit is a lot easier to get compared to a guy that's going to be willing to sit down with you talk about things that you have problems with things that he has problems with and how to somehow manage to work those things together because a guy that's just going to buy you shit like what do you want from this guy in the same way that like when you hear dudes nowadays go like i just want a bitch that don't know how to talk or read i just want a bitch with fat ass right you're gonna get it but you're not gonna get anything else like that woman you sure you attract what you put out so if you only want a girl that is you know not very intelligent and has a big big bust and you know a lot of butt cheek capacity that's cool i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that you can totally do that i'm sure there are plenty of women that will be down for that but then you can't expect anything more than that like you're, ex you're what do you want like you, you know what i'm saying you, you there there are there's gives and takes to this shit usually the mask comes off at some point and you'll know whether it's like within their character to be this way
I saw something the other day that said toxic men are always looking to see what they can get from you. And well, you're literally saying that you want a guy to do stuff. What do you mean get stuff from you? You're this, this so far in this video, all I've heard is I want stuff from these men. That's princess treatment to you. Okay. Like healthy men are always looking to see how they can serve you. I just, I don't know, bro. I don't think this, I don't know about that. Didn't you just tell me? Didn't you just tell me like a few minutes ago that we shouldn't be looking at the gender dynamic videos where it's like men do this, women do that, and men sometimes do this and men do Didn't you just tell me they do that and you're just telling me like, oh yeah, I watched this video that like guys will do that. I don't, I don't give a fuck what Facebook post you saw that on. This is a bad way of thinking about relationships, dude. Um, I get it. Like maybe men in a certain way are supposed to be providers, right? Sure. But you also have to understand that we're in a modern day of uh, dating. Women work, men work, men communicate, women communicate. So if you have a very, you have a very particular way of thinking about how men should do stuff, that's fine. I'm sure you could find dudes that, that will do that. But this is a very not good way of looking at it. I'm going to keep it a bug. This is a very niche way of looking at it. This woman uh, talking about how men are supposed to serve you. I don't want to serve a woman, dude. I, I just kind of want to be with somebody that's going to reciprocate the feelings that I have for them. And it's okay if those feelings are not like completely equal, as long as you're doing it, you know, the same, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, it doesn't have to be the same. It just got to be equal, right? That's, that's, that's the real thing. Uh, I don't necessarily, I don't want to, it's okay to buy people stuff. Like if you're in a relationship, I see nothing wrong with taking your wife, girlfriend, whoever you have, husband, boyfriend out on a date buying them flowers every once in a while fine i get it sure telling them that you care about them and stuff like that trips fine but i wouldn't say that's like a necessary you know i would not never go as far as to say like i couldn't date somebody that couldn't do these things for me that's crazy that's crazy as fuck <laughs> that's crazy that kind of sound what this is is like solid entitlement it sounds like when guys go if i'm dating a girl she gotta be able to suck me off whenever i want i gotta get that pussy all the time i need that i need that wet shit all the time and it's like i get it like i understand what you're saying but that's just impractical it's just impractical dude you shouldn't really want as what you should actually want as much as you can in a relationship is just somebody that's going to be able to understand you that's it that's really the most you can ask for and everything else is just a plus that's it the way this woman's looking at it is incredibly flawed and it seems like she has actually no she has actually seems like i don't know it seems like she has actually no real world dating experience and i'm sure she's dated guys dated guys that have given her stuff like this so she's saying it but this isn't a real relationship this is just guys giving you stuff but go ahead tell us about how guys serve you they can get from you and like healthy men are always looking to see how they can serve you and i feel like that is spot on i feel like if you meet a good man if you meet a good guy somebody that's got a healthy man in a healthy relationship is usually not somebody that's going to serve you but a guy that's going to keep it a buck with you right you want somebody that's not what do you mean by serve? <laughs> I just I don't know what you mean by serve, dude. Am I gonna get served too? Like, what do you mean by serve, dude? Usually, when you're when you're in relationships, I I just I don't know, man. That is like a really weird way of looking at it, dude. Um, in your when you're in a relationship, it should just be more so about compromisations and understanding that this person has their life and you have your life. And those two things don't always have to exist simultaneously and that you have to do your stuff and I have to do my stuff. But sometimes we have to we can do stuff together, if that makes any sense. That's a healthy relationship that goes across the board for men and women. As far as for what men should be doing in relationships when it comes to being with women, that's not exactly black and white, especially in today's world. I don't know. Like, what do you want exactly? You want a guy to make a, a big income? Like, that's not exactly something that you're going to come by very often because people nowadays make a median income of about fifty to $60,000 a year. And I guess that's not really a lot to a lot of people. But if you wanted a guy that was making more than that, which it seems like this woman wants a guy that's making more than that, I think it's really important to understand that these guys that are making like 100K, or maybe 150K a year or more, these guys are working like all the time, okay? Like, maybe they got like, four hours a month or like four hours a week at most to not work. And maybe you can have that time be spent on you, but you have to also expect to a certain degree, these guys are not really like relationship material, like to a certain degree, like especially in the, the, the retrospect that I'm hearing from this woman. So, I mean, eh, 
she just got like a very weird understanding of relationships. I can tell she's never actually been with a real man or a guy that's like, because like, I would never consider myself to be a real man because I don't understand what that even means. Uh, I just consider, I would consider myself, and I think most probably people have this understanding too, just being a dude and hopefully you work, you're trying to be the best you possibly can within every aspect of your life. And sometimes you get it wrong and that's I, and hopefully you have somebody next to you that's going to go along with that journey for you. This woman just kind of seems like she wants to be somebody's, she wants to be somebody's child. It seems like, like you just want a dad, which I mean, it, if that's what you want, that's, if that's what you want. You just want somebody to take care of you. That's fine, but that's that's not what a healthy relationship looks like. And are always looking to see how they can serve you. And I feel like that is spot on. Yeah, she wants a daddy, bro. Also, don't expect that every man that approaches me is going to be my type or the kind of man that I like because I'm very picky. But I do. Dude, that's crazy, bro. So, like, this woman wants a guy that's making a big income. She wants a guy that's going to be flying her out. She wants a guy that's going to be giving her that quote-unquote princess treatment. And she has restrictions on what he looks like. I mean, you're just, how many dudes you think are going to be really interested in you? I just got to know. Like, I'm sure there are dudes. Like, I'm sure. But, like, what is, are these dudes actually taking you serious? Like, let's be, if a guy's making six figures and this guy, you got to worry about whether this guy is, like, attractive as well. You don't think this guy's got multiple options? Many, many women want a guy like that. Many women. Women like this. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not looking down upon those women. If you're a woman and you want to be a, a, a household a housewife and you want to take care of kids, I'm not looking down upon that. Good for you. Great. I think that's awesome. But you have to understand that's a big market of women that are all competing for this guy. What the fuck do you got besides, like, laying down looking like Majin Buu from the Z arc, you know, from fucking Majin Buu arc from Dragon Ball Z? Like, it's just... Like, what are you going to do? You know, what do you have to bring to the table besides saying, I want this and I want that? Like, even if a guy did sit down with you and go, yeah, I want to be in a relationship with you. What does that relationship look like? Like, is he just going to be with you once a day? I mean, once a day or once a month? Or does he just give you money? Is he working all the time? Is he lit with other women? What kind of relationship is this? Is that a relationship you want? I don't know. Okay. Do still respect them and talk to them as I like because I'm very picky, but I do still respect them and talk to them as though they're my friends. It's only when they risk rejection and are very intentional in the way that they speak to me like, hey, I want to take you out or hey, I'd like to get to know you better or I have feelings for you. That's when I start to be like, oh, do I like this person? Like, do I see myself with them? Then and only then. Honestly, I think this woman's delusional, bro. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. These don't even sound like real interactions right now, dude. This sounds like a dialogue tree <laughs> when you're playing an MMO or something like that. I could go on and on, but this is really long. So if you guys have any questions or you want to hear more, just let me know. Dude, I don't think this woman's actually ever dated, bro. I think she just met a few dudes with a lot of money and then she got, she got the quote unquote princess treatment once or twice and now she can't get off of it. Bye. I don't know who needs to hear this. Terrible. Don't believe any of that shit, by the way, dude. Unless that's what you want to do. If you want to look for a guy that makes a big income, but you can't really expect much from that guy besides money. If you're dating someone or you have a partner who makes comments about your body telling you that they would like you better if you looked smaller, slimmer, leaner. If you have a romantic interest in your life who tells you you need to lose weight and they'll like you better that way, that's not okay. I Why say not? this because I was in a... I, if anything, that's a good thing. Dude, like... I don't know why these... It's like people nowadays have this very weird idea of how a relationship should be. Like, it should just be perfect no matter what. And the guy or the girl should just completely accept everything that you have for them. A lot of times, that's not going to happen. If you do meet somebody, by the way, that accepts you exactly the way you are, that's not even a good thing. Because that person is just going to let you walk on them. And they are they don't have a fucking backbone. You should have the ability to say, hey, nah, I don't like this. Uh, I need you to stop doing that or else I'm going to have to walk away. That's just what, that's okay. That's completely fine for somebody to have hard stops. Like, if you're just, that'd be like a guy just letting his girlfriend get slammed down by like 15 other BBCs because he's perfectly fine with exactly the way she is. Obviously, you're not going to be okay with that. At least, I hope that you're not. If that is something you're okay with, that's fine as long as it's like consensual. But most of the time, people are not going to be okay with that. If you're in a relationship with somebody and they start gaining weight and you lose attraction for that person, you should not feel like you're entitled to stay with that person if they don't do what you think they should be doing in order to, for them to make themselves more attractive for you. It is what it is. Like, 
I'm losing attraction for you, and then you voice that, and that person continues to gain weight, that then you can leave. I don't know what to tell you. Like it's just like it's like anything in life. Like if you you have a job, and you're doing good at the job, but then suddenly your job description changes, and you don't want to do this shit anymore. It's okay to leave. Like that's fine. Like you're not you're not entitled to stay with somebody because. I don't know. They're, they're, you're your partner because you've been together for a long time. I don't give a fuck about that shit. No. If you lose attraction, don't feel bad for that. Um, but I think it's like super important to voice those things. Like real deal. Like tell that person, hey, I don't like that you're doing this, right? I just don't. Can you not do this anymore? No? Then fine. I'm at the lead. That's what it is. That's okay. That's completely fine. And it, same thing when it comes to, especially when it comes to gaining weight. If you don't find that weight gain very attractive or you're doing... Or it's detrimental to the health. Whatever reason, it could be both. Don't feel bad in saying that. Okay, you're that's fucking awesome. That's actually really great that you have that ability to say that stuff. Um, people nowadays, for some reason, think that somebody has to accept them exactly the way they are, no matter what. That's not good. That is actually terrible. That is really bad behavior, matter of fact, because what that actually is telling me is that you're just a shit person and you feel like you should never be wrong. That's terrible. Every, everybody can be wrong and everybody should be wrong. And it's really great to have somebody that's going to have an opposite opinion on those things because if they know it's wrong and you don't, that's awesome. So I don't know about this. Dude. This this woman's on some different fucking shit, dude. I hate yeah, these people nowadays just scream they've never actually been into a relationship. OK, and I don't even think that. I'm like the connoisseur on relationships, but I see this so many times where people just have these weird ass fucking opinions. Like they should not be with like, oh yeah, guys should, men should not tell you that they, they find you attractive if you're thinner. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you dumb? Of fucking course, I'm going to find you more attractive in one way compared to the other way. Does, let me ask you a question. It does it work vice versa. Like if you were really, really overweight and I got with you and you were very fat, but then you lost weight. Would you feel? Would you still feel the same way if that guy was like, hey, you just lost a bunch of weight. Can you regain that fucking weight because I don't like you anymore? You're actually fucking ugly looking when you're really skinny. Like, do you think that same way? I, I, what the fuck? And they like you better that way. That's not okay. I say this because I was in a relationship for I'm not going to say how long, but way longer than I should have been with a person who kept telling me that, Everything was perfect. I just needed to lose the weight. That's okay, bro. All right. The fuck? It's not. These people are delusional, dude. I, I'm sorry, bro. This shit is not real. I'm sorry. This is actually agonizing to watch, bro. These people, man. And initially, he would disguise it as concern for my health. I would always keep it a buck, dude. I remember this one time this girl had told me, she was like, listen, I'm 200 pounds. And I was like, damn, that's fucking crazy. 200? Nah, you got to lose some weight. And she was like, you don't think I'm pretty? You don't think I'm pretty? You don't think I look good? And I was like, it doesn't really matter to me that you look good or you, you know, feel nice to me or whatever the fuck. None of that really matters to me. It's really about the 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 security of you being healthy. That's it. That's the main thing for me. I don't really care. And she was like, but I'm going to lose my butt. I'm going to lose my boobs. I'm going to lose this and this and this. Like, I'm not going to be as attractive if I lose weight. I'm going to look sickly. And I was like, that's, it's fine that you think that, but I'm going to let you know right now. None of that shit matters, given that you become healthier. I don't give a fuck if you think you look worse or whatever the fuck. But you know what happened? After that person lost a lot of weight, I think it was like 70 pounds, right? Uh, the most confident she had ever been, felt amazing, felt look, you know, she had, she, had, she had a new outlook on life. Now she's a gym girly and things such and so forth. Really, it's, it, it's, it's great. Sometimes in the moment when you rip off that Band-Aid, it stings. It's really, really painful. But later on, it's amazing. It's awesome. It's great because in the moment, it's always going to feel bad. But guess what? The momentary, that momentary little lapse of like, oh, I feel terrible. It becomes way better when you actually do something about it. Okay. So this like idea of, oh, I was with a guy and he told me that I should lose weight. So I broke up with him. That's terrible. You're bad. That's a very bad thing to say. That is a terrible thing to say, matter of fact. You just told me that you're an intolerant person and you can't take simple criticism from somebody that specifically probably has the best, somebody that is specifically looking to benefit you the most and you couldn't even take criticism from that. All right, man. <laughs> and when I told him there was nothing wrong with my health, then he would... It's not really... Okay, even if it wasn't about your health, like the... Are you really trying to tell me that you shouldn't be attractive for the person that you're with? Are you fucking dumb? Even if it wasn't about health. I don't know how many people I've met 
that tell me they don't like big they don't like big guts. Most people do not like having increased mass on the person they're with, man or woman. If you're a man, you have to drop your gut on the girl's back or the on her fucking butt cheeks like as a shelf while you have sex with her. There's really only like one or two positions. If the girl's sucking you off, you got to lift up the whole entire stomach area for that girl, and if you drop it one second, she's dead and same thing for women. I don't even know if I'm having sex with you right now. Is this your vagina or is this just a gut fold? I don't know. It's not practical, okay? It's not attractive for most people. And if you're going to sit there and tell me that your obesity is not affecting your health, which is bullshit, it is, it doesn't matter because if that person finds you unattractive at that body size, then that's an issue. What the fuck is the problem with that? What are you t <laughs> talk about how we needed to look good in pictures together and he was really thin so it didn't make sense i mean if i'm being really honest the past version of me has been the biggest red flag but i think you're so used to hearing society and the people around you constantly tell you to become thinner that even when the person who says they love you says that to you you, you think that it's completely justified they might actually be serious though in the realm of i love you they just might not be like they're they're probably just telling you the truth first and foremost and letting that be the main thing like somebody could love you but they're just going to give you the truth do you think that love is just sugarcoating you love is just i'm going to tell you what you want to hear nah dude that's actually not what love is that's a complete opposite of what love is that's just somebody enabling you so if you actually did think of love it would be the guy telling you hey i don't find you attractive when you're a bigger size that's what love is that guy is being honest with you he's keeping it a buck with you if a guy told you no you're perfect exactly the way you are he's enabling you that's not a good thing would you say the same shit if a guy if you were if you had a drug addiction and that guy told you hey no nah, you're perfect exactly the way you are while you have like five needles in your arm would you think that's okay nah because he doesn't find that attractive right no, oh, okay, whatever, dude. Like, it's okay one way, but it's not okay the other. It's just interesting how these people believe, man. When the person who says they love you says that to you, you, you think that it's completely justified, only it isn't. As I'm working through the trauma of my past relationship. She's never, listen, dude. If she ever finds somebody to be with and she finds a guy to be with that's going to basically just say yes, queen, to everything she says, I don't think you're ever going to find fulfillment in that. I, I really don't think there's like, that's really disgusting. You're going to find resentment in that matter of fact. If you're with somebody and that person never actually tells you you're wrong or tells you that you're making a mistake and you're always right about everything that you do, you're going to eventually resent that person because they're not actually helping you. That person is literally there at your detriment. One thing that I think would be really helpful would be to have your partner ask you how you'd like to be supported. Would you like to walk more? Would you like to move your body more? Would you like to learn a new dance form? Would you like to... Uh, you, you want him to sugarcoat the, the words instead of telling you straight out that he thinks that you're more attractive if you lose weight. That's what you want? Sure. I mean, you can always say something a little bit better. You can always say something a little bit nicer. Sure, but I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, dude. I, say it however you want, to be honest, dude. Like, as long as that information gets out there, I mean, it, I don't really understand why this even matters to her, given the fact that she literally said that she broke up with him. So, I do, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, to her. Eat more greens because you know you feel like your body needs it, and you're no, maybe just lose some fucking weight. Like, maybe we should practice a calorie deficit. You're too fat. Like, I don't know what to fucking tell you, dude. Like, <laughs> not having enough vegetables, would you like to have more fruits? Would they be okay to hold you accountable to it? I think that would make more sense. And that would be a realistic expectation of a partner. No, you're just like, like the way that she's doing it. She's just pushing the goalpost back. She's basically trying to find a way to forgive herself for what she did, knowing that what she did was unjustified because she just told you that she broke up with her boyfriend because her boyfriend told her that she was not looking the best at an increased body fat percentage. So she broke up with him. And in order to alleviate that claim in order to like take some blame off of herself she's basically saying well he could have said it in a different way he could have told me to eat more vegetables he could have told me to go on a diet he could have said it in a nicer way i mean sure he could have and you know what would that actually would you still have been with him if he did probably not like i'm gonna be honest with you probably not it would have nothing probably would have changed this woman is intolerant versus your partner coming and telling you they want you to look a certain way because they think that would be better for you I think that is completely misplaced, that is completely removing your agency. As adults, 
in a relationship together. Yeah, this woman is fucking nah, dude. This this woman is on some different shit. There, this woman is on some different shit. If you're if you're an adult, you should want somebody to come at you with the truth. Okay, the fact that you literally said that you want somebody to beat around the bush to get to the point r rather than somebody just telling you the point straight out and you have the audacity to sit there and go, well, as an adult, you should just be able to nah, dude. Nah, that's not what adults do. Okay. Adults tell you what the real deal is. Okay. Sometimes it might be okay to give somebody a little bit of sugar coating sometimes, but if I'm in a relationship with you and we're supposed to be partners and I care about you deeply, uh, yeah, I want to fuck. I'm going to tell you the truth. What, as opposed to me going, well, maybe like you sure you want to eat that burger like you sure you don't want to eat the you sure you don't want to eat the salad like that no i'm gonna tell you like listen you're gaining weight i'm not really attracted to that that's not something i was in this relationship for and it's going to negatively affect my attraction to you and if you want to break up with that person for that i mean it's fucked up but you can go ahead and do it but don't try to sit there and try to take the blame off yourself for this shit i don't give a fuck what you say this is a bad explanation completely misplaced that is completely removing your agency as adults in a relationship together this doesn't make sense. This woman doesn't make sense. This woman is literally trying to forgive herself. She's coping so hard right now. She's trying to tell you that she was in the right while knowing that she was in the wrong because I know she was. She knows she's in the wrong because she tried to explain her way out of it by saying like, he should have just said it this way. He should have just said something else this way because he knew she knows deep down that what he was saying was true, but she didn't want to change and she was too caught up in her ego to change. So she's going to try to find a way to like, to try to get the blame off herself. When in reality, there's no way you can get the blame off yourself. You fucked up. It is what it is. So the next time your partner brings this up, maybe have that conversation. You didn't have the conversation. You just told me you broke up with him. What are you talking about? You can't even you can't even practice what you preach. With them to tell them that you don't appreciate this, but what you would like instead is support. But it's not, you just told me that you broke up with the dude. So you don't even believe what the fuck you're saying. And see how they react. I want to know if my that woman made no sense that the, uh, no bigger bodied ladies can relate to this if you've always been kind of the fat friend when I was younger I never seemed to have a problem attracting guys that wanted to sleep with me and like we're talking like stereotypically hot guys here <laughs> but yeah, I don't really care if like men want to have sex with you I don't know why so many times I hear women like flex that the fact that men can have sex with them I know I know men can have sex with you it I mean I'm not looking at that as anything other than guys just being horny that's fine I can get men to have sex with me too dudes all over do if you go on gay dating apps you'll find dudes that are just layer like they'll just have pictures of their dicks and they'll have their like if you look in the description it's just height and dick size that's it that's all they got that's literally all there is on the dating profile okay and I'm not saying I've been on the gay dating apps but I've met many dudes that have been on gay dating apps and they have told me this exact thing so I'm not impressed if you have guys in your life and you're a woman and these guys are like you've had sex with a lot of men like you're Marissa Matthews and you want to like sit there and go I've had sex with hundreds of men that's fine it's gross though these dudes are it's not it's not really anything it's not a bragging point really it's really not it's actually really sad but um if you want to have sex with a bunch of dudes you can go ahead and do that if that's what you want to do, but I would never brag about it as if it's anything to brag about. It's, <laughs> it's like being, it's like bragging about that time that you like, oh, guess what? I could eat, I could suck the most dicks off in the gay dick sucking competition, but I'm a heterosexual man. Like, why are you, you know, like, it's not something I would ever brag about, but all right. What I did have was a problem with finding guys that wanted to be with me, yeah. that wanted to take me out in public and introduce me and to I, the- I see this quite a bit, like guys that are willing to have sex with you, but they're not willing to commit to you. Like, that's why I always say don't have sex with guys uh, whenever you want to. Like, if you want a relationship, having sex with men is going to do the exact opposite of what you want it to do. Because men and women have different dating standards, right? Men, men will have sex with literally any woman. It's just what it is, okay? Like, sure, it just depends on, like, the caliber sometimes. Like, I've often said this. Like, women have two ladders and men have one ladder. Men have one ladder where they'll have the women on their ladder that are going to be quote unquote friends, but they'll also have sex with them. Okay. So the friends and have sex with the ladder and the women are all on that same ladder. Women have two ladders. Women have the ladder of friends and the, where they'll never look at men as anything more than friends. And then they have the other ladder where it's like having sex in the relationships. When men are having sex with women, um, he doesn't look at anything other than just sex. When you're looking at it, in your ladder, you're thinking, if I give this guy sex, then I'm going to be uh, eventually get a relationship. Nah, you don't have the same ladder as him. He's not thinking about it in the same way. So if you're having sex with dudes and you're not getting commitment in return, why are you doing that? It's not beneficial for you, especially if you want a relationship. Make him work for it. Spend a few, t literally take weeks, weeks, 
and see if the guy is still around by those end of those weeks. If he isn't, then he wasn't the right guy for you. I hate to tell you that shit. Um, make him commit, okay? That's what it comes down to, okay? But most definitely, if you're obese, it's going to negatively affect you. If you're fat, most dudes don't want to be with fat girls. And most women don't want to be with fat guys. That's a common thing. Problem with finding guys that wanted to be with me, that wanted to take me out in public and introduce me to their friends. I did have guys who would never be able to finalize plans with me, probably because all they were looking for was to hook up. And I made it clear that that wasn't going to happen. I had guys who would plan to meet up with me after talking to me online, and then they would either not show up or they would get up and take off as soon as they saw me. Damn, I had guys. That is fucking crazy, bro. I'm gonna need to know how many times that happened where you met a dude and he was like, <gasps> nah, that ain't for me. I'm gonna have to be out. That's crazy. How many times has that happened? So he would talk to me for a while online and then all of a sudden they just kind of go dark for a bit. And when they resurfaced, they were now dating a great girl. And the guy would talk about how this new girl he was dating was so much like me with similar personality traits and quirks. But of course, she was thin and beautiful. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I hear so many of these people say the same thing like, wow, I'm just so funny. I'm just so creative. I'm really good in conversation. Like I have a great personality. And I always think, do you think you're the only one that has those particular traits? Are you aware that other people also have those traits and that are also conventionally attractive? Do you not realize that you're like, you have the same shit that everybody, nobody thinks that they have a shit personality. So when you're flexing that you have a great personality or whatever, yeah, the attractiveness is most definitely going to come through because you're going to meet somebody with the same personality traits. Like, yeah, I'm sure you're very unique, but you might not be worth you might not be worth it compared to the person that's like you that's just thinner or more attractive or healthy. I had guys who would say things like, "You have such a pretty face." I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know about that, man. That's damn. Them dudes was lying. But of course, she was thin and beautiful. I had guys who would say things like, "You have such a pretty face," or "You're so pretty for a big girl." I had guys at the bar. Who that's insane, dude. You're pretty for a big girl is actually insane, dude. That's a crazy ass disrespectful comment. Damn. Damn, bro. That's crazy. That's like what my dude friends be saying sometimes. They'll be like, "Damn, yeah, you're not that ugly." Yeah, you're not that busted. Yeah, you look alright today. Like, what, what you mean today? Like, well, I don't look good. Like, I didn't look good yesterday. What about tomorrow? I don't look good tomorrow. That's some backhanded ass compliment. That's a fucking, that's a mean girl thing to say. Say things like, you have such a pretty face, or you're so pretty for a big girl. I had guys at the bar who, after being rejected by a bunch of thin women that night, would decide to make it a fat girl night and then try and dance with me. And yes, that is something I heard a guy say to his friend at a club before he tried to dance with me. Why don't you just lose weight? How many times has this happened to you where you just go like, damn, I can't believe that I'm really getting stood up by all all these men, dudes are walking out on me in terms of dates. They look at me and go, <clears throat> and they walk away. And women, they, they, these guys are literally ghosting me. They're leaving me on the fucking dance floor. They're just, they're, they're, I'm the last option. How many times has this happened to you and you don't make a decision to lose weight? Like, what is up with these people, dude? How many times have I heard people say this shit and never look at the actual solution? Me. I had guys who would actively single me out when talking to my friends and say things like, but not the fat one. Dude, when you gotta lose some fuck. This is insane, bro. Are you serious? This actually happened to you? And you still fat as fuck? Inviting my friends somewhere. I had guys who would think they'd be able but to- But what did your friends do? But what did your friends do when the guys was like, yeah, we going to the party, we going to the party. With the exception of that bitch, that fat ass bitch, don't bring her. That bitch is busted, nah, not nah, her. Like, what do you, what do your friends do? Did they go, oh, well, if my friend can't come, then none of us are going to come. Or did she go, yes, as a period, yes, of course, th leave her here. Like, was that what happened? Things like, but not the fat one, when inviting my friends somewhere. I had guys who would think they'd be able to get away with treating me badly because as a fat woman, I must have low self-esteem and be willing to put up with anyone who was willing to be with me. It's crazy I that people could just post this shit online too, isn't this? Like, you're just posting about all your fucking L's when it comes to relationships. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's okay to be open about the stuff that, but like, you know, listen. It's I right to have bad experiences with dating, but usually I'm like really okay with people having bad experiences of dating and talking about them online. If they're just one-off things like, oh, I met this guy and he was a cannibal and he tried to eat my arm on the date. Like that's weird, right? Or like if you had that story and then you're like, oh man, I met this other guy and he was just crazy, bro. Like I went on a date, he, he literally came with a fucking straight jacket on, right? These are two very different scenarios that are happening to you, just like dating experiences, normal things, right? But for a woman like this to come on and go, I just keep having the same experiences over and over and over again in the same scenarios. And I just think it's fine for you to, to have these experiences and talk about them, but how the fuck are you gonna have this many experiences that are almost exactly the same 
and do nothing about it. Like you, you do realize that you, ha you're the, you're the least common. Th you're the one. You're the one in the middle of that. You understand that? The weight seems to be the biggest issue. I've only been watching this video now for like a minute, and I know that the weight has been a problem across all these dudes, and you even know it. So why the fuck are you still fat? All right. That's like somebody. That's like somebody going like, man, I just, I don't know. I just keep getting into these car accidents. And you go like, tell me about these car accidents. I don't know. I just keep drinking. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I go out to drink one time and then I, I get in my car and I just hit five people. And that's happened to me like nine times. Like, I don't know what it is. These cars I get are just fucking, they, I keep getting these cars and they just keep running into people. I don't know what it is. Uh, but anyway, I'm going out to drink later tonight. What's up? You want to do, you want, you, you want to hang out? That's what it's like. Like, you're literally seeing the writing on the wall, but you're not doing anything about it. It's obviously not, I mean, sure, it might be the bad guys. Like, there, are, I'm sure there are plenty of dudes that are just assholes. Fine. But you have to at least take some accountability here and acknowledge that it has something to do with you, too. Like, there's a lot to do with you. Yeah, maybe look at that a little bit. I had guys who would try to manipulate me into spending money on them, guys Dude. that would try and make me jealous just for fun, and guys that would try and gaslight me into thinking that my friends were lying to me about things. I had guys who seemed to think they wouldn't have to try with me because as a fat woman, I should be appreciative of whatever attention they were willing to throw my way. I had guys who would play with my feelings and string me along because they knew that there was no one that they had to compete with for my attention. And I know that some of these experiences are going to be relatable for women of all shapes and sizes, but I'm just able to speak from my experience as a fat woman. You don't have to be a fat woman, though. Like, these are experiences that you have as a fat woman that you don't need to be a fat woman about. It's just sad. It's just, this is just literally sadness. That's the only experience I know. I just thought a lot of these things would be relatable to bigger women because I'm it's, sure we've been through very similar experiences. This and, is just sad experiences, dude. And some people wonder why I don't date. If you if you no longer date because you have these experiences. Damn, bro. This woman is on some different shit, bro. This is some pure delusional right here. So you... So you took all these experiences and determined that the fatness was the reason, okay? Because she literally is titling this video, Fat Girl Experiences While Dating. And in order to alleviate the ill will you have been receiving in the dating market, instead of fixing the weight, which seems to be the biggest issue, you instead took yourself out of the dating market in general and didn't fix the weight. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, that sounds right. That's I. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works. I guess. I guess. I mean, you still want to be in a relationship. I get right. No. All right, man. Whatever, dude. All right. I don't know, man. I don't know. Took me a little bit longer to finish this video today. The dudes outside eventually left. It's darker now. It took me like literally three hours later to record the rest of this video, bro. These guys were out there all day, man. The porch looks great, though. The porch looks great. So they did a good job on that one. But anyway, doesn't matter. I hope, I really hope that everybody here is not as delusional as these as women, uh, delusional as these women. Uh, I mean, look at the blissfully ignorant, like, fucking face on this woman. Like, what is that, dude? Come on, get your shit together. Get your shit together. It's not just the men, it's you two. Come on. Anyway, guys, we're getting the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do that stuff for me, I'd appreciate you tremendously. Um, I want to thank everybody that's a member and that's subscribed. Thank you so much. I appreciate you tremendously. If you want to become a member, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button, which I'd appreciate tremendously. And if you want to hit that join button right after that, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. But regardless, I think you're amazing for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I know it was a big commitment, but uh, I hope the cringe didn't dissuade you too far. But anyway, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in floss because I floss and I floss a lot. I floss daily all the time. Sometimes I just floss when I'm not doing anything, just floss in my teeth because it's really comforting for me. So I love floss and maybe you like to floss too, but maybe you like to floss with that dance. You know what I'm talking about? That the backpack kid dance. But either way, you're an amazing person. Um, I know you're not as delusional as these people. There's no way anybody could be like these people are on some different levels of I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it, dude. They're working under like some really, really weird pretenses. Like I feel like they've never really experienced life, but I know you have, and I know that you go through stuff and I know that you have, uh, you have problems and you, you know, you try to find a way to alleviate those problems. I want you to know that you're, you're, you're really a strong person for going through what you have gone through and transforming your problems into things that are going to benefit you. Cause that's the way I like to look at a lot of things, right? is that even though you're going through a bad time in your life, you're having a bad experience, um, the fact that you're able to go through that and you're able to come out the other side makes you a better person because now you're going to have the ability to 
go through those same things again. You're going to have the ability to, when something like that does happen again, you have the experience and the know-how to navigate that situation in a much better circumstance than you did before. And then also, you can actually bestow upon the information that you have acquired from taking on that challenge to another person. And hopefully that person has an easier time taking on that challenge too. That's an amazing thing. Thank you for that. Honestly, I'm going to be honest. That's really amazing. And this also comes with the fact that you've been drinking a lot of water. Oh, man, the indulgence of water that you've been sucking on recently is actually insane. Good for you and your drinkage of water becoming lubricated beyond belief. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description of this video and the description of my channel. All you got to do is just click that about section. You'll see it. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 